Hey, Armand here for your forecast of the week of November 1st, 2020. It's a week of stops and starts. I think maybe more stops than starts. And it is also the week of the U.S. presidential election, and we'll get to that in just a little bit because I want to talk about the overall feel of the week before we get there. Now, this is a week where the, I'd say the biggest thing that is happening this week is Mercury's station to go direct on November 3rd. And um, th this, Mercury is really the star this week because Mercury stations to go direct on Tuesday. He squares Saturn on Sunday before he goes direct. And then after he stations and goes direct, he squares Saturn again on Friday. So Mercury is really setting the tone for this week. And Saturn is really sort of uh, adding the sub theme. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, well, Mercury's going direct. That's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. Except for the fact that right around Mercury's stations is when we tend to have the most problems. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is a time when we're likely to see mercurial snafus multiplying. And so it is a time to be a little bit cautious about things. Um, now, I would add in that also at that time, the moon will be in Gemini, Mercury sign, adding an extra little layer of slipperiness to things. So, in general, you got to be careful Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That information might slip out, that it might be the wrong information, that data could be skewed, that you could be looking at things a little bit the wrong way, or that communications might get lost, things along those lines. Um, and then Wednesday, Thursday, well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's the, that's the feel for the first half of the week. Thursday, Friday, the moon goes into Cancer, which is a very protective kind of sign, and it, it I would think that the collective mood is if, if we don't react well to uncertainty with the moon in Cancer, then Mercury's retrograde or Mercury's station to go direct is likely to give us reason to be kind of overly cautious if you want to look at it that way. I would say Thursday and Friday have a very protective, somewhat reactive vibe, especially because Mercury is squaring Saturn on Friday. This is no time to be trying to get away with something. This is no time to be sort of, you know, I, mean, I know you think, well, Mercury stationing to go direct when we're looking at, we're looking at the moon in Gemini. Maybe we can slide something past somebody. Maybe. But my sense of it is uh, that this is really a time when you're likely to be called out for doing anything like that, especially Thursday and Friday. You have to go through protocol this week. You have to follow the rules. You have to kind of, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's. And generally speaking, just follow, follow protocol. And it's, and it's sort of an over, I'm overusing the word, but it is the thing to do this week. When we get to Saturday and Sunday, we get past that Mercury square to Saturn. The moon goes into Leo. A little bit more upbeat feeling. We're sort of heading towards the last quarter moon. Uh, and uh, Well, we're at the last quarter moon. And it is, uh, it's a little bit easier energy. The flow of things is a little bit better on the weekend. It ought to be kind of a nice weekend, you know, socializing and whatever else you can get away with in the case of quarantine. So... Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, slippery time. You may find even the communications that start on the weekend, you know, Saturday, Sunday, kind of get jammed up a little bit. There's some uncertainty about what's going on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. By Friday, you've got to try to clear things up and give a, you know, as clear an answer as is possible. And then on the weekend, you can try to have a little bit of fun and enjoy yourself. Moon and Leo, come on, you know, that ought to be pretty good, even if it's waning. That's the overall feel of the week, if all else were equal. But all else isn't equal, of course, because Mercury is stationing on November 3rd, and he's, that is Election Day in the U.S. The last time that Mercury stationed on Election Day was the 2000 election with the contested result between Al Gore and George W. Bush. Already, of course, people, I, the mainstream media, as well as the, <laughs> the, the two or more polarized uh, sides, are already saying, we're not going to get a result on Election Day. We may not get a result for a long time. That is, at this point in time, built into the expectations. And that's a good thing. 
It's a good thing that we know that that's likely to happen. However, the time between Election Day and when we get the results, never mind what happens depending upon what those results are, because <laughs> half the country is going to be real unhappy no matter which way it goes, uh, is likely to be a very tense time, especially Thursday and Friday with Mercury squaring Saturn and uh, and the moon in Cancer, which is the sign of the United States sun. It's the U.S. sign is Cancer. So uh, it, it's a time where we're likely to see a lot of reaction and we're liable to see a lot of uh, retrenchment. Everybody sort of going to their own camp. Circling the wagons, as I always say, when it comes to the moon and cancer in tough times. So uh, it, it's very likely that the end of the week will have a lot of very tense energy, more so even than Election Day and the day after. With Mercury in Libra, which is Saturn's favorite sign, and Saturn in his own sign of Capricorn, again, you got to go through protocol. You got to kind of keep things honest. Uh, you've got to be able to demonstrate what you're doing. That's awfully good when it comes to getting a real result. It doesn't necessarily mean that that result will be accepted by everyone, but it sort of it sort of indicates that uh, again, it's not a good time to get away with things. So we, we shouldn't have too much sneakiness. Well, we might have sneakiness in the election results, but we shouldn't have anybody getting away with it. So, uh, it, you know, the U.S. election is it's not the whole world or anything like that, but the whole world is looking at the U.S. election. You know, the whole world is looking to see what's going to happen, and it's, it's not inconsequential. This is also the election, the presidential election, that is closest to the U.S. Pluto return. That is, Pluto is getting back to the spot in the zodiac he was when the United States was founded. We don't know a lot about Pluto returns because uh, it takes 246 years for Pluto to go around the zodiac and get back to his same position. Obviously, people don't have Pluto returns. Uh, but even entities, you know, you've got to be around for a long time as a country or any other kind of entity to uh, to experience the Pluto return. This is one of the major Pluto returns that we'll be seeing since Pluto was discovered in 1931. So, you know, this is how does it all work out? Well, Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth, uh, of, of deep transformation. And that this is the election that is happening closest to the Pluto return indicates, well, you know, is this working or is this not working? That is the question that is really kind of out there. Um, there have been tenser moments in the U.S. and there have been tenser elections, but not, not, not for a very, very long time. And uh, I mean, you really have to go back to the 19th century to get anything like this kind of situation in like the Civil War and its aftermath uh, to get the sort of tension that we have here. It's very appropriate that it's a Pluto return. Uh, so we're, you know, it's really asking some very deep questions. And uh, we're not going to get, and this is maybe the, the point that I'm sort of, you know, getting to here. Regardless of the outcome of the election, there's going to be a lot of contention. There's going to be a lot of anger. There's going to be a lot of questioning going on. And no matter who wins the election, no matter who winds up getting sworn into office, it is not the end of the story. We're not coming to the conclusion like, okay, well, we found out who the president's going to be and things are going to be okay. No matter which way you think things would be okay. It's not going to work like that. No matter who wins, we're going to have to deal with the fallout of it. We're going to have to deal with the deep divide. We're going to have to deal with the radically different value systems that are present in the U.S. And we're going to be working this out for quite some time. It, you know, you have to pay attention to this, just as you have to pay attention to the pandemic, which is amping up and making all of these issues so much more hot. You know, they would already be there. They've, they've been there for a while. They would already be there, but they're becoming much hotter because of the pandemic. We, you know, we've The quarantine is sort of like a crucible in which things are cooking. Um, and, and what we're going to see over the course of time is this is going to play out 
into 2021 and 2022. And I mean, the, you know, the fallout of this is going to be for a long time. Well, it's not the fallout. It makes it sound like this is the one deciding moment. This isn't the one deciding moment. This is a deciding moment. This is a hinge point. But it's one of many. It's one of many. And there's a lot of pressure on the U.S. right now. Now, that means, you know, that means fights with coworkers and, and family members. It means that, you know, when you walk into the store and you are or are not wearing a mask, you might get beat up. You know, th this is this is this kind of stuff that's going on. This is not some sort of it's out there in the collective. This is what is happening to us individually as well as in the collective. It is affecting our lives with the people we work with, with our family members, with our significant others. If you have a significant other in the pandemic, that's... There you go. In other words, things are not going to settle down anytime soon. That's your takeaway message. Things are not going to settle down anytime soon. And so your role in this is to be as active as possible, do what needs to be done in your personal life, do what you can do in terms of the collective, and, you know, take some time to step back and meditate, go for a walk in nature, have a beer, whatever it is, take some time to step back from it all in your own life and in our collective lives. We're, we're, in, this, we're in this for a while, no matter what. And on that happy note, I'll see you next week.